Hello again, and welcome to Honey Bees and Beekeeping, a year in the life of an apiary. I'm Dr. Keith Delaplane, extension entomologist and honey bee specialist at the University of Georgia. In our last program, we learned some of the history of beekeeping, and we got ready to set up an apiary of 10 hives. We built the hives, found a suitable location, and prepared food supplements and medications. All we lacked were the bees, but not anymore. In this program, the bees arrive in the mail, and you'll learn how to install them in the hives and check their progress. This is where the real fun begins. But first, I want to tell you a little about the honeybee. Honeybees are the most well-known social insect. There are three criteria an insect species must meet before it can be called truly social. Number one, it must have cooperative brood care. That is, individuals under one roof help each other take care of the offspring. Number two, a species must have reproductive division of labor. That means most of the individuals in a colony are more or less infertile and do the colony labor on behalf of the fertile individuals, in our case, the queen. And number three, a species must have overlapping generations. Offspring stay in the colony to help parents produce more offspring. The honeybee has all three of these traits, so it is called eusocial or truly social. All termites and ants are eusocial, while only some wasps and bees are. Colonies of bees are held together by a complex network of behaviors, chemical pheromones, and common nutritional and security needs. A new package colony begins with about 13,000 bees and grows to about 50,000 if managed properly. In nature, most colonies only reach 25 to 30,000 before swarming and beginning a new colony. However, in our apiary, we will try to build up each colony to a population of around 50,000 to maximize honey production. In a honeybee colony, there are three types of adult individuals, the worker, the queen, and the drone. Notice the size differences. By far, most bees in the hive are workers. These are infertile females that do all the work of the colony. They clean cells, feed larvae, tend to the queen, build comb, defend the nest, and forage for pollen and nectar. The other female in the hive is the queen. She is easy to distinguish from workers because her abdomen is elongated. Usually, each colony has only one queen. She lays all the eggs in the colony, plus she gives off chemicals, called pheromones, that regulate the behavior of the bees. Male bees are called drones. They are large like the queen, but they have a stockier body shape and cannot sting. They make up only about 10% of the hive population. Drones do no work in the hive. Their only function is to fly in the air and mate with young queens from other colonies. There are several pieces of equipment you need to make your beekeeping more efficient and enjoyable. Obviously, no one likes getting stung, and stinging is something to consider with beekeeping. Fortunately, though, bee breeders have worked for decades to produce bees that are gentle and workable. And with enough protective clothing, you can work in your apiary for hours with practically no stings at all. In the beginning, you may be more confident with a full bee suit with coveralls, extra long gloves, and a veil. However, bee suits are hot. And as you get more confident with bees and the idea of stings, you may be satisfied with just a veil. It's a good idea, though, to keep a full bee suit on hand for those days when the bees are particularly irritable. Over time, many beekeepers develop a resistance to bee stings to the point that they don't even swell when they are stung. For most beekeepers, the joy of beekeeping far outweighs the inconvenience of stings. Your equipment should include a hive tool. Hive tools are specially shaped instruments to pry apart supers and frames. Bees glue hive parts together with beeswax and propolis, a mixture of tree resins. The prying end is broad to reduce damage to wooden surfaces. A narrow screwdriver, on the other hand, would cut into the wood. The other end is a general scraper. This is perhaps the most important beekeeping tool. It's a smoker. Smoke has been used for millennia to calm bees and reduce stinging. 
And after all this time, we still don't know for sure why it works. When bees are smoked, they run deeper into the hive, and many of them start to eat honey out of the cells. This might be an instinctive response to fire, and the bees are preparing to evacuate the nest and start another one. Bees engorged with honey in this way may be less inclined to sting. According to a more sophisticated theory, smoke may mask alarm odors that the bees use to warn each other of an intruder, thereby suppressing the defensive response. But these are really academic questions. The bottom line is, smokers calm bees and reduce stinging. The earliest smokers were simply smoldering torches. But in 1875, Moses Quinby invented the first practical smoker with a bellows attached to a fire pot. This is the same basic design we use today. The bellows blows air through the fire pot and directs the smoke out of spout. Dry cow pies, corn cobs, and old burlap make good smoker fuel, but I like to use pine straw. Early American beekeeping was never more than a small backyard industry, but with the milestone inventions of the 19th century, the movable frame hive, beeswax comb foundation, a centrifugal extractor, and a bellows smoker, large-scale beekeeping became possible. With motorized vehicles, beekeepers could move beehives more easily and maintain several apiaries instead of just one at home. Until the 20th century, most honey was eaten in the comb. But in the early 1900s, demand grew for bottled liquid honey that had been extracted from the comb. During the sugar shortages of World War I, consumption of extracted honey skyrocketed, and beekeepers enlarged their operations to handle this new demand. With this growth in beekeeping came a need for a reliable source of bees. Just before World War I, a specialized branch of beekeeping started in the southern states and California, queen and package bee production. Today, this multi-million dollar industry mails bees to professional beekeepers and hobbyists all over the world. Let's get started installing the bees in our apiary. There's a lot of work to be done.